Hi, today I would like to demonstrate the process of making coffee using the pour over method. Benjamin Franklin once said among the numerous luxuries of the table, coffee may be considered one of the most valuable. With 50% of the US population, or roughly 150 million Americans consuming coffee daily, I think Mr. Franklin may have been onto something. So for today's demonstration, I would like to first go over the tools needed second the process itself and third the end result and cleanup now the tools we have today are a glass decanter a coffee grinder a tea kettle and the coffee itself now the grinder isn't always needed that's only if you buy your coffee whole beans like i had we bought the whole bean coffee and we're going to place it in the grinder to get the right consistency to put into our decanter now for this, I like to do a medium to fine grind. I believe this gives the coffee a much more full bodied flavor. Grinds like fine are generally used for espresso, while medium grind is standard for a drip machine. Now the process itself begins with grinding our coffee beans, which I've already done. We place the grounds into the plastic reusable filter here, and we put it over the top of the glass decanter. Now we boil our water, which I've already done as well, and we're going to put enough over the grounds just to cover the entire grounds. And we're gonna wait 30 to 40 seconds just for the grounds to absorb all the water. What this does is it opens up the flavor of the coffee a little more. So while we're waiting for that, we'll just set it to the side and we'll talk more about the grinder. So the grinder I have here, I think it was $20 retail, and it has multiple settings for coffee. Like I stated, I do the medium grind. This is a personal preference and surely not a requirement. So the decanter we're using right here is by Bodum. So once you pour the water through the filter, it's going to collect down here in the bottom. I generally get about two to three cups in the decanter itself, they do sell bigger ones, they sell smaller ones. This is just also a personal preference. So after we waited 30 to 40 seconds, we're going to take our boiling hot water, we're going to slowly pour it in a circular fashion over the grounds. So once we've done that, it's going to come up to the top here and then we're going to wait again for that water to settle in the bottom and then we will put the rest of the water in there. This is something that takes a little bit of time. It's a lot more time consuming than a normal Keurig which may produce one cup of coffee in 60 seconds. For me it's about quality and I believe the pour over method makes the coffee taste that much better. So our water is starting to go down here. So we're going to take our tea kettle and slowly pour it in a circular fashion again, right up until the top. And you're gonna have to repeat this process numerous times. It is filled to the top and I can tell we still have a little water in the kettle here. So once we're all done with this, we're going to move on to the cleanup process, which is quite simple actually. So for this, we're just going to remove the filter and we're going to dispose of the grounds in the trash like you would any other coffee maker. Once you've drank all the coffee out of the decanter, you're just going to rinse it out and set it to the side until you need it again. So first we discussed the tools and ingredients needed. Second, I explored the process itself. And finally, we talked about the end result and the cleanup process. So the pour over method, like I stated, takes a little longer than standard makers, but I believe the end result is a great cup of coffee, and who doesn't want one of those? Thank you for your time and attention.